Hi and welcome to week 11 of economics. So this week we will have a comprehensive exploration of economic concepts and pivotal events that have shaped industries and market dynamics. In the next few minutes, we'll delve into market power and its implications, government regulated market practices, the impact of deregulation, the causes and effects of the 2007-2008 financial crisis, and the evolution of consumer welfare policies. So starting with market power, firms may strive to increase their market power to gain an advantage and to gain control over market conditions. Market power allows companies to influence prices, production, and consumer choices often resulting in increased profitability. Strategies such as mergers and acquisitions, exclusive agreements, and product differentiation are often employed by firms to establish and strengthen their market power. However, excessive market power can lead to reduced competition, resulting in higher prices for for consumers, limited choices, and potential inefficiencies in the market. So next, we'll explore three practices uh, regulated or banned by the government to protect competition. Antitrust laws are a crucial tool used by governments to ensure fair competition and prevent monopolistic behaviors. Three main practices regulated uh, or or prohibited include price fixing. So price fixing occurs when competing companies agree to set prices for their products or services manipulating market prices to their advantage. Price fixing is illegal and anti-competitive. Second would be bid rigging. In this practice, competing firms collude to decide the winner of a bid before the bidding process, limiting competition and inflating prices. Bid rigging is also illegal and prohibited. Third would be market allocation. So companies sometimes divide markets among themselves to reduce competitive pressures. For example, agreeing not to compete in a certain geographic, uh, geographical region. Um, such market allocation practices are considered anti-competitive and are regulated by authorities. Moving on to deregulation. So deregulation refers to the reduction or removal of government regulations in specific industries, aiming to promote competition, innovation, and efficiency. Deregulation often results in increased market competition by removing barriers that limit entry and operation in a market. The effects of deregulation vary across industries. For instance, in the airline industry, deregulation led to increased competition, lower fares, and a wider choice of routes for consumers. Similarly, in telecommunications, deregulation resulted in expanded services, innovation, and reduced prices due to increased competition among providers. However, deregulation can also lead to challenges, such as inadequate oversight, market instability, and in some cases, potential risks to consumers and markets. So by the end of the week, we will start analyzing the causes and effects of the 2007-2008 financial crisis, uh, also known as the Great Recession. The crisis was primarily triggered by the housing market collapse, fueled by the subprime mortgage mortgage crisis. Risky lending practices and the bundling of subprime mortgages into complete financial products contributed to this crisis. When housing prices declined, it resulted in a widespread mortgage defaults, causing significant losses in financial markets. So the effects were widespread, leading to a global financial meltdown, a severe recession, massive job losses, bank failures, and a decline in consumer and investor confidence. The aftermath of the crisis Uh, prompted significant regulatory reforms aimed at preventing a reoccurrence. Finally, we'll be talking about the evolution of consumer welfare policies. So these policies have evolved to prioritize the well-being and protection of consumers. 
uh, initially focused on preventing fraud and ensuring product safety, consumer welfare policies have expanded to address broader concerns, such as consumer rights, privacy protection, fair competition, and access to accurate and transparent information. Policies have adapted to the changing dynamics of the market, incorporating new challenges such as e-commerce, data privacy, and ensuring fair practices in the digital economy. So I hope that this was a sufficient enough preview of the week ahead. I hope it was insightful and prepared you a little bit for the coming week. I look forward to seeing you and working with you during class. Thank you.